Well, good afternoon, everyone, and I'm sorry that I'm, I'm running late, but I, first of all, want to thank everyone for your presence here today to, uh, to celebrate with us. In a word, that's what we're doing. We're celebrating uh, this remarkable life. We're celebrating the living legacy of William T. Coleman, Jr. Thank you, Senator Casey, and your staff for organizing this event, this special program in honor of a great American patriot, a statesman and advocate. By whatever title you wish to use, the Honorable, Mr. Secretary, Esquire, Sir William T. Coleman, Jr. I would like each panelist, beginning with Justice Breyer, followed by Judge Pollack, then uh, followed by Professor Ogletree and Attorney Reed, uh, to consider the question, what brings you to this conversation today, and how has your life intersected with and been influenced by Bill Cole? Well, and that's what he's like, intelligent, is it? imaginative, a practical, and determined. His motto was that of Paul Freund, which a few of us remember, where Paul Freund would often say his motto was, uh, and, uh, some priests told him this, uh, the priest's uh, remark was, why should the laity have all the gaiety? The clergy is Irish too. Now, how you <laughs> well, anyway, that's Bill Coleman, and you see why we've been good friends for goodness knows how many years. I was just counting up, and uh, Bill and Levita have been close, close, close friends of Kathy and me for 60 years. 6 0. <laughs> and I, I want to say to Levita and Bill that that friendship is one of uh, our dearest assets. He was an extraordinarily able, thoughtful, balanced lawyer, and he was an extraordinarily fine person. It should be noted that Bill Coleman was the first black lawyer to be hired at any, how shall I put it, substantial law firm in the United States. I think it's fair to say that of an extraordinarily talented group of lawyers working on the Brown case, Thurgood looked to Bill Coleman more often and with deeper respect than any of the rest of us for good advice. And it was another mark of Thurgood's brilliance that he looked to the right person. I don't remember a conversation with him ever in my years with him that he hasn't mentioned his wife or his daughter or his sons and what they're doing. I mean, the whole idea that he, his family was the centerpiece uh, of his life is a testament uh, to all of us as somebody to work as hard as they could but not forget that someone else uh, is important to them and had uh, no reluctance to share that with others as well. He always uh, teaches every single day, every chance he gets, to make people appreciate the fact that it's not what party you're in, it's, it's what interests you have and what are the principles that motivate you. But here's someone who had a full-time job working in a corporate law firm and at the end of the day used his time, his talent, and his resources to work on one of the most important cases in the history of our nation. That's what you call real sacrifice. So I salute you, Bill Coleman, Jr., for what you've done for those of us who you will never know, uh, and that we are where we are because you arrived there first and you kept the door open for those of us to follow you. Thank you. And I, I also learned from Mr. Coleman that it was okay for a person of color to work and to succeed as, at a major white law firm and to work in a specialty like corporate law. Uh, which, is ultimately, uh, which ultimately led me to my concentration in bankruptcy law. So one of the things that I find very impressive about Mr. Coleman is his persistence. What do you think is his most important legacy? I've, I've met in my lifetime only a few people as dedicated to a completely, honestly, consistent uh, pursuit of what he perceives to be the dominant um, moral value. 
Uh, I suggest that the recognition of Bill as a person of principle is manifested in the fact that, to my knowledge, there is no person in Washington who can call up and reach on the phone senators, congressmen, cabinet members, whoever, of either party. And and get things accomplished. I see uh, Bill Coleman's legacy as a fingerprint. And what do I mean by that? If I touch this piece of furniture here, that imprint could last for a very long time. And as you think about Bill Coleman, the imprint he's made on the lives of so many people will last a very, very long time. And it's hard to imagine someone with as great a gift of generosity uh, like Bill Coleman Jr. He doesn't get angry, he just writes the brief or helps write the brief in brown uh, and then represents Girard College and then is head of the NAACP and, and then uh, uh, yeah, receives the Medal of Freedom and wants to be uh, Secretary of Transportation, is Secretary of Transportation. Now what is that back there? Because what motivates him, I believe, is an intense desire in a very active way to make a difference particularly in public service matters. He can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> he'll come into my office, or he'll probably, Levita will know at home, and he has four new ideas, and they're usually related to public service, and you're going to get this person involved with that person, and put these people together, and give them these ideas, and before you know it, boom, something will happen, it'll be good. And my goodness, that is what's happened. That is what's happened in his life, and he's participated in so many things that have made so much difference to so many people into the United States of America, all for the better so uh, that's what, long explanation of what you're saying, but I think that's what we're all saying, and we say thank you uh, for making that difference. And if I was to sum up Bill Coleman's life in one concept, it would be that he took the mandate from Mr. Houston, and he was a social, en and is a social engineer to change society for the better. He informed the Commandant that women would be going into the Coast Guard. And so all of those issues, the women and, and the whole question of the airports and building I-66 and trying to complete the 39,000 mile highway system and, and, and the subway system, the Atlanta airport, and the way Bill approached decision making was to hold the public hearing as was referred to. He held, he had, he, you came in, you submitted papers, and he had hearings. Is there another thought that you would like to leave with us today, or is there a question you would like to address to another panelist? Uh, it was an extreme honor and blessing, and one of the highlights of my career to be on this panel. And I salute Mr. Coleman. We have this living legacy, as we call this program. It would really be wonderful for us to create institutions that carry the name of William Coleman, Jr. So some five-year-old would be, what, what, what is that? Who was that? Uh, he is a living legacy. Bill hadn't completed any course. <laughs> waiting for him to do more. <laughs> 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 we got to get these salaries in, please. <laughs> as a friend, as a lawyer, as a human being, as an, an American, he's made a difference. So I found what Frankfurter said, because Frankfurter wrote him a letter uh, and, uh, after his clerkship. And here's what he said, quote, to Frankfurter to Coleman, he says, what I can say of you with great confidence is what was Justice Holmes' ultimate praise of a man. I bet on him. And Frankfurter says, I bet on you. Whatever choice you may make and whatever the fates may have in store for you. Uh, I would just like to say, Mr. Justice Frankfurter, you won your bet. Ah. And as Mr. Justice Frankfurter bet on Bill Coleman, Bill Coleman has bet on the rest of us, uh, present generations and future generations. And we thank you, Bill. The United States is a great country, and all of its citizens 
want to follow the Constitution and want to see all people be successful. It was a great country. It is a great country. We all are entitled to that. We must believe it. We have a great court. We have a great president. And we have a great Congress. But more important, we have American people today that I believe ultimately will defend the liberty of this country. It means that my father, who was executive director of a boys club and also a director of Camp M, would often say, there's no such thing as a bad boy. It's just a good boy caught doing something wrong. The other was, a boy is a diamond in the rough, add character, and you have a jewel. The two statements by uh, Justice Frankfurter are one, the mere fact that wisdom seldom ever comes is no reason to reject it merely because it comes late. The other was, if you want to be a good outstanding lawyer or a good outstanding public official, all you have to have the ability to do to know how quickly to determine what's relevant. I ask you to do that. This is a great country. Let's keep the fight up. And boy, all of us are going to love it, and our children are going to love it. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Coleman, thank you very much for your inspiring words and your inspiring example.